Sometimes, the answer to a perplexing societal equation is in plain sight. If only those dogged by the calculus cared to look, myths, misconceptions, mixed with the desire for recognition to be part of a one-size-fits-all alumni, can easily be the root of an unbalanced society. Vocational versus academic learning has been an age-old nonsensical debate, with the best brains promising every five years to balance the scales, yet, predictably, do absolutely nothing. The nice smiles and hopes are all steps in the wrong direction. They serve as a means to trade cooked fish for tiquas. But wouldn't our society be infinitely better if parents, teachers, and policymakers provided our children with the fishing line and bait mated to the technical prowess to be self-sustaining members of society? Boy, oh, boy. What is that? Hi there. Oh, is it there? Everything safe? Hi there, yeah. Hey, man. What's the vibe for today, doggy? I uh, said we have to go and link the bus. And uh, for the goods for us to go on this path, yeah. I, I best we go to school today, yes, yeah, sir. And so what school are you talking about? Uh, you know when last you pass a test, you talking about school and fix up your color, guys. Yeah. Like a little... Even though I pass in, guys, sir, at least I doesn't be by the office like you every day. Uh, sir, I care, guys, sir. As you see me there. Yes, I don't know. And if I go back to school, as it's biology, um, mechanic I want to do, you know, as a... Mechanic, as You could do any mechanic, as Why, why? I said, uh, I have to go and check the boss. Oh, the boss is a kind of man. You can't come inside to wait by the gate. Yeah, man, yeah, man. Hope that man get the goods here. Yeah. Why? You see? my money for me, man. I I go bring that for you. And that to the man. I hope that man get the goods, you know. Get the goods, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, I am not going back to school, but to me, if I go back to school, I'm a mechanic. I want to do my job. <laughs> That's a mechanic. Uh, you don't know already, guys. A mechanic. Uh, yeah, go get that. We're going to teach you that, guys. Yeah, you know, uh, mechanic, right now, there is chemistry, biology. And science subject that running thing. Oh, that guys, uh. You check it? And if you have five CX yeah, you have no work yet, guys. Uh. It wasn't for that, guys. If it is now, oh, now so. Oh, now so, guys, I walk in, guys. Uh. Wow. My queen, guys. Uh. The woman working in the bank. And the woman want me to work for her, guys. Uh, and you don't know. And I'm kind of right. When I walk in this with my hand, I like As to. I tell you, I walk in on the block there. And police? That's the block. I like the block, my Police hot, yeah. I like the block. Shit, police! police. Statistics have proven school dropouts are more likely to be unemployed you or underemployed, I go, I go have health you. problems, live in poverty, be on public assistance, and be a single parent. Academic factors are clearly related to dropping out. Students who receive poor grades, who repeat a grade, or who are over age for their class are more likely to drop out. Students with poor attendance for reasons such as illness or lack of financial support may be at greater risk. Crowded classrooms and lack of vocational and technical training for students who may not be academically inclined are all contributing factors. When that dropout is left unattended with no education and no marketable skills, this is most times the outcome. Choosing a partner. Do you think you are ready to choose a partner? The first one was established in 1996. You think you're ready? and is located opposite the Grosley Catholic Church. The second is an ancillary. Sufre has its own. And there is also another center for adolescent renewal and education in Denry. The motto is simple. Success is achieved through striving. The Grosley Center came about in 1995 when the Gruel Committee, which um, started off this program, 
they realized what was happening in the area with a lot of young people dropping out of school and not having um, an opportunity to learn a skill. Or when they were finished with school, they were just, on, like we say, on the block. And um, they started this program with intentions of trying to um, help raise the self-esteem of those persons and also to um, help them develop the marketable skills that they may have within them that they're not even aware of. The mother knows that person is by his friend because they always do things together. Good things. The program aims to foster positive attitudes in the trainees towards themselves, others, work and work-related situations, empowering them for more wholesome, independent living. We realize that um, a lot of those students the normal class system would be like 30, 25 to 35 students in a class. And you find those who are able to work, you find the teachers work with them. However, those who are not able to do as much or as well, they're kind of um, left behind. And when they come into the care program, we realize that there are lots of flaws because you find that they have not only behavioral problem, but when it comes to do the actual, the attitude, it's not the best and they feel neglected and with that in the care program we try to work with them holistically by trying to develop help them develop their self-esteem and again the program is based on the spices program the spices program enables the young persons to develop spiritually physically intellectually creatively emotionally and socially There are 81 primary and 24 secondary schools on the island, which serve as a source for care trainees. We have from the primary schools, we have quite a few drop out from the secondary school, either for behavioral problems. And again, it meshes from they having not been able to cope academically. So you find because they are not able to, they, they become troublemakers because like they try to seek attention, but in the wrong way find themselves involved in all kinds of activities that would warrant the school to have them withdrawn from the program or as would say expelled. So we have quite a few of those kids who come to us and also we have those who have completed school but not of um, age to be employed. So you know they are just out there and because of that they come to us. We also have some of those persons who are at um, like schools like the SDA and other secondary schools also who because of financial problems they find themselves just being left out there and to help try to develop their self-esteem and all of that they come into the they become enrolled into the care program. Get your desks, put it in place and get ready. One of the first things that we look at, the child must have a willingness to want to do the program. Because in many instances, you have um, dropouts from other schools or whether behavioral or whatever, and parents say, oh, I want you to take. I want him to do the program. That's what some people will definitely tell you. And when you have those persons coming, it's like the parents want them to come in, so they have that attitude, and it's a battle with them. However, if the child has a willingness to do the program when they come in, you would see straight off that they are ready, they are ready to grasp, as you call it, the second chance program. They are ready to grasp the second chance program and run along with it. The first phase is the adolescent development program, designed to develop a deeper level of self-worth, to foster spiritual development, to instill socially acceptable codes of conduct and discipline, and also to improve literacy and numeracy abilities as well as interpersonal and communication and conflict resolution classes. If you have not developed the attitude, the proper attitude within yourself to work with yourself, pen and paper, you will not be able to go up, just rush ahead and start working with utensils. Okay, you do not have the right attitude, you have a pencil in your hand, you have a problem with somebody else. One of the first things that might cross your mind is make use of the pencil and jab the person, stab the person, however. Now, if we allow you to just move on to the skills aspect and you have not gone through working with the soft skills in the ADP, when you get to carpentry, what are you going to do? Are you going to pick up the chisel and just punch somebody? Are you going to pick up the soldering iron? You're doing electrical and just choose. I can't take it on. 
I'll give you something to hold. An excellent plumber is infinitely more admirable than an incompetent philosopher. The society that scorns excellence in plumbing as a humble activity and tolerate shoddiness in philosophy because it is an exalted activity will have neither good philosophy nor good plumbing. Neither its pipes nor its theories will hold water in St. Lucia. There appears to be a stigma attached to vocational learning, fertilized by myths and misconceptions. A lot of people believe that care are for the rejects. That's how they put it. Care is for the retard. And you even sometimes get officials who say, oh, even care too is part of this. But, and then you even find, I, I got this experience from a trainee miss. Sometimes I have to put my bag on my crest to hide it. So when they see the black and white, they think I'm from college, so they don't say anything to me in town. Or we sometimes have to defend myself because the man wants to tell me I'm a retard because I go into care. And you get that a lot. We have, been to, we have been trying our best to eliminate these kind of stigmas based on the fact that we have trainees in all walks of life in St. Lucia. We have past trainees who are police officers. We have those who work at the banks. We have past trainees in every single hotel on the island, on the airport. So we know that using the past trainees, because the past trainees have been coming in to enlighten the present trainees as to what their um, what they have been through and how the program has really helped them and to take them from where they were and where they are today. We always tell the trainees, prove people wrong. So when the person doesn't know about the program and they just assume or whatever, it depends who you're getting your information from. The better thing to do is to go to one of the life skill centers. We have five in St. Lucia. You go to one of them and find out for yourself, find out from persons um, a coordinator or an instructor or a child who has done the program. So many times they have been failed by parents, the system. And this is an institution, regardless of whether they have the finance. Because you see our building, they're not a class, they're not the top notch. But yet still the work that is done in this place is really transforming lives. And this stigma, it is one thing that it, it serves as a hindrance because you find trainees cry sometimes when their parents recommend them to come to K. I don't want to come to that school. But then after you get testimonies, Miss, I really did not want to come to K. But now that I am at K, I feel that this place has really transformed me. And when you have the word transformation, it means that the person you came in as is not who the person is right now. Souls are divided into two groups. Name them for me, please, somebody. Male students account for 88% enrollment. Many cut, times, cut, cut. due to teenage pregnancy, Cross young ladies drop out of school and, and find themselves in a cycle of dependency. You see young girls that are totally dependent on a, on, on a guy to say, here, look, look a dollar, look five dollars or two hundred dollars at the end of the week to go to town to buy something. Your child should not be part of the next statistic we have out there. As young girls and just young boys, I don't, don't know what to do. The best place for your child to be right now would be care. I'm not saying that it is the only place that they could be. But right now, care is doing something that a lot of institutions have not done and maybe will not do in the future. We are changing lives. When we return, a girl bakes a cake, a boy saws his wood, and the chef plays with his sausage. This time I will say all those that I love and I will say what it is, and I need everyone to move, okay? Depending on the maturity and literacy level of the young person, phase one of the core program, which focuses on adolescent development, may take from three months to two years to complete. Phase two takes about two years and focuses on training in a potentially income-generating skill. 
We offer auto mechanics, carpentry joinery, electrical installation and small appliance repair, and garment construction. Over the past 20 years, CARE has supplied the business sector with a cadre of skilled, employable hands. I remember this particular child, Keith Mason, he came in and his mother said, oh, she heard so much about CARE, she was not too sure. And he came all dressed in his uniform, he had not been interviewed, and she said, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know I want you to take him. So even if my husband has to build a desk, because the father is a carpenter, I want you to take him. And we accepted Keith, because I couldn't turn the lady down, I, we accepted him, move on to... From what you said, he had been at SD and he had been just repeating the years and not seeing any progress. And he did well, he moved on to um, the skills aspect. And from there, he was able to go to Sir Arthur. He did his two years stint at Sir Arthur. He got a break to go attend a university in the States. And he succeeded with flying colors. He got one of the top honors. And when the mother saw me, she was so elated. The lady started crying right in the supermarket. I can speak for two people like Sara Lee. Started with single parent family, started with nothing. Now she has her own hair salon and she's making something of herself because we have too many young people out there depending on a man to try and help them survive. And the mere fact that we are able to help these young people, not just give them a little desk that they could sit at, but something that they could take their skills and their talent and utilize it so that they could be better developed, that they could help our society on a whole. Not for school, but for life. We prepare them not for the time that they are with us in the program, but when they go out there in the workplaces also and um, with, the, with the families also. We prepare them as to how to be better parents, role models in their communities and out there in the society also. If you study the part very well, if you study the function of the part very That's well. That's one of my main joy or achievements for me, um, to see that they, they graduate and most of all to be employed after graduation. Some of them can be very remedial and there are some who are a lot more advanced. And to create the balance, if you don't have the, the know-how skills, it would be very, very difficult. But at the same time, it does become a real challenge at times. At K, we teach our children the theory as well. As a matter of fact, for the first year, before they even go into the practical, they are into the theory, how it works, the name of the path, its function, you know, and so forth, before they can really get into the practical part of it. So the theory is very, very much important as much as the practical. Two of them have already secured a job with Northwest. Also, we've had students who did the training with reputable business places and they are still presently employed with these companies. We also have had students who did um, a skill prop in auto mechanics and they now have their own businesses. Additionally, ancillary and canneries have been the forgotten states. Every administration has promised a secondary school, yet children from both villages are forced to traverse either to Marigo or all the way to Sulphur Secondary, and many simply drop out due to the excessive transportation cost. But since 1996, Ancillary's Adolescent Renewal and Education Center has been operational. This is the reason why one of the, the centers will open in these communities to take care of those young persons in these communities. And we feel it's an opportunity for these young persons to take full advantage of the care program in these communities. However, unfortunately, we don't have a number of young persons from the ancillary community entering the program here, unfortunately. Why do you think that is? I think it's, um, there are a number of reasons. One, it's a financial problem in that parents feel they cannot find the, the funds in order to assist them to come into the program. And I think the other aspect is that most parents want to see their children enter a secondary education since we have universal secondary education for all and they do not take into consideration the fact that some of these young persons cannot focus or do not have the capability and ability to stay in the secondary schools for five years. So most of them go in there and they would drop out after one, two years, 
or they would finish the entire five years and are unable to write the CXC exams. 472 trainees completed the core program, representing 90% of youth enrollment. In 2013, CARE's success in offering an alternative education program was recognized by CXC and was included among the local institutions identified to participate in CXC's Second Chance program. You are not just telling a fancy story because you work here. You are also a parent of a child who came here. Tell me about that decision to move your child from secondary to care. First week we started here, some of his friends were walking out there and they saw him and one of the boys said, hey, check Tariq, Tariq going back to school. And one said, boy, um, what happened? You, um, somebody did that to you, man. You finished school and you're going back to school again? Why don't you just stay out there and whatever? And I asked him, what did they say? And he said, nothing. I said, I heard, you don't have to tell me. And I said, where are these boys heading to the beach? And every day, religiously, they would head out to the beach, 10 o'clock, and they get back, they pass around 2 o'clock going back home. I said, would you like to be one of them? And he said, no, mommy. And I said, okay, you know, I'm not going crazy. I sold the program to people over the years, and that is why I bought it for myself, and I'm selling it to you. And it's because I love you, that's why I want you to do it. And I had him. And he did well, he completed the program. Well, we had a little ticklish situation because he didn't know whether to say yes, miss, or yes, mommy. So sometimes he would just answer yes. But he did well and he moved on to the, and now he's all, almost completed. He dropped out of school in Form 4, but his mother was not about to let him become a statistic. With um, the care school at Ancillary, this school is very, very strict. That's why I like this school. It is very strict. They don't tolerate nonsense from children. They try their utmost best, you know, to push them and to guide them, to lead them. So that's why with his performance, he cannot change because they do not tolerate nonsense. And you know, any, any, when they go out of the way, they'll call the parents in, you know, and we try to correct it the best way we can. Before I would say care, but when my son attended this school, I was happy. And then I would tell them like, they would say the money, the money, the money. I say, it's not about the money. You have to send your child forward. You have to help him, you know, help the children in life to go forward. And then, you know, I would encourage them to send their school here because one reason I like this school is that it is very, very strict. This clean white uniform and gifted culinary fingers are that of Malcolm Labadee a boy with an exceptional story. He attended infant school, then he went on to primary school. But he didn't write the common entrance exam because he didn't want to do it. His dream was to attend care because he wanted to become a chef. He loves cooking. So that is why I sent him to care so that he could learn the skill. Now he just finished um, job training and he told me that they are going to keep him. So after he's graduated, he's going back. But at care, he was taught other subjects like English, maths. He, he does his maths, his English, and then his skill. Okay. Um, so from what age has he been coming to care? 13, very young. In my opinion, eh, care is the best institution on the island. Because after the children have done the program, the free year program, about 90 or 95 percent of them gain employment after leaving care. And there are children who go to secondary schools and they stayed out, some they have all their degrees. Those who have degrees, those who have their CXs, they stayed out for a whole year. I have children who went to secondary school and they stayed, some of them stayed out a year or two. And that just, this one just started, this one came to care and then he is going to get employment right away. The Caribbean Youth Empowerment Program, Rise St. Lucia Inc., 
the National Skills Development Center, the International Youth Foundation, with the dollars provided by USAID, partnered with CARE to provide life skills training to 26 young people ages 17 to 25 who were considered highly vulnerable because at the time of their enrollment, they were actually incarcerated at Bodley. You say, I'm a bad boy, you know. Fellas have to respect me. Fellas are afraid of me, miss. You get that all the time. But we, with this program, we were able to work with these young boys and it was amazing. It was amazing the changes you would see in these young people's lives. When I heard Bodley, and you see me, I look petite. When I heard Bodley, I had that fear in me. And that was around the same time you had the high crime rate in St. Lucia. I said, next thing they come inside of there and look for these boys, and it's me they get. But when I got to really, when I, when I got to speak to these young boys with a record, I realized that the person I thought they were, because of what I was told prior to the program, that these were not these young men. I was seeing hope. I was seeing um, possibilities. I was seeing love. I was seeing passion. I was seeing mistake. I was seeing sorrow in their eyes. 65% of all entrants completed the program. Coming up, the true face of care reveal. A pastry chef is a member of a classic brigade de cuisine in a professional kitchen. Day-to-day -day responsibilities include researching recipe concepts and developing new recipes. Pastry chefs create pies, candies, chocolates, cookies, cakes, ice creams, custard, and bread. They are also responsible for inventory and dealing with wholesalers. The aroma from the oven was all it took to hook him from age 13. The school had an um, uh, exhibition and the care had an open day, so the primary school, they invite the primary school and experience what the care has done. Yeah, and I came here and I see the number of skills, yes, and I start liking the vibe. I told my mom, so I'd like to come here and learn a skill for life. Yeah. And that was from 13 years? 13 years, yes. Why did you want to go to secondary school? Um, to me, like, it was very long and out there, you, when you finish secondary school, you have to go up the morn and things. So I rather came here for three years, yeah, ADP, and two years in skills for me to learn a trade. There's a theoretical, the written part, and the practical part. Considering you did not go to secondary school, how were you able to cope with the parents of what? Um, I was making my mom to help me research how to become a pastry chef, asking people advice and also. Post-job training, Malcolm has secured full-time employment at the Windjammer Landing Beach Resort. While some will feed the sweet tooth, Others are destined for jacket and ties. And even in training, they showed no mercy to the keyboard whilst displaying sharp focus and skill. Well, I attended the NG Post Secondary School. Did you write CXE? No. What form did you drop out? Four. Before you dropped out, what were some of the challenges you were having at school? Well, I had to face the kind of friends, new teachers, um, new subjects that were new to me, yeah, and problems at home. Yeah. Would you say that you were attitude-wise and behavior-wise at secondary school? You were a problem child? Uh, kind of jovial. Kind of jovial. Tell me some of the problems you got into at school. Well, and you know I have your fans, right? Me that day, you know I have your fans. Well, I wasn't a troublemaker, I was more, you know, 
uh, laughing. You know, I was still doing my work though. Yeah, I was to say like somebody that would make others laugh. Teachers call it class clown, but you know, in, in class, they also have somebody that lighten up, you know, the place. Well, that was the kind of person I was. And under what circumstances did you drop out? Well, it had to deal with, you know, uh, moving back from father's home to mother. And, you know, I couldn't cope with that, so I decided, well, to just visit the care in Sufre, yeah, and start up. Mm -hmm. And tell me your first impressions. Well, in care, I heard that, you know, you live with a skill. But when I, I came there first, the first year was ADP, and they teach you how to interact with yourself, you know, build up your self-esteem, self-respect, you know, and other good qualities somebody could use in their life. And when you... When you go walking through the town or whatever and your partner see you with your K uniform, what is it tell you? Well, they, they, well, they would have said, is that, yeah, K you go in and stuff, but I would confront them and tell them that, you know, K is not a bad school, K is actually a second chance, you know, for people like me that left secondary school or people that haven't even been through secondary school. Secondary school, normally, I will differentiate it from the K. In secondary school, the teachers don't normally take time to cope with the students, you know, to sit down and let them know, well, what's in your mind or what you're going through at home. But at care, you know, the teachers individually, they take student by student, and they try to know a little bit about you. So if any time you might be in a problem, they will not say like one time he's a troublemaker or he's a nuisance, well, they realize that, you know, that boy has problems at home and he thinks some of these problems are affecting him, both maybe in school, in attitude, you know, with others. How old are you, Zimran? I'm 18 years old. Where are you from? I'm from Pebush Wawono. The girl with the short hair from Pebush is related to you? There are many, many <laughs> girls with short hair there. Zimran, what secondary school did you go to? St. Mary's College. You went to college, my man. <laughs> What house were you in? Abercrombie. You in abs? Yeah. Fire for you guys. <laughs> you in abs or two? Yeah. Tell me about life at St. Mary's. Well, I would say it was quite difficult, very challenging, especially the work. Mm. Yeah. What subjects did you? Art, science? No, I was in business. You were in business? Yeah. Did you complete your five years? No, I did not. All right. Tell me about some of the challenges at St. Mary's. Well, I was um, experience, experiencing many migraines at St. Mary's, so coming to school was very, very difficult. There were like times I was missing like up to like two weeks I was not coming to school because of the migraines. Because I was not able to complete St. Mary's College, like I was just in the house, I didn't have anything to do. I was even thinking of like resorting to illegal means of getting money, but then my mom, she really cared for me, I guess. And she really wanted to see me do something with my life, so she advised me to enroll in the care program. You did ADP? Yes, I did. What was that experience like? Well, I'm a shy person at nature, so coming to the ADP program, um, there was this certain subject called public speaking. Well, you, you would have to stand in front of the class and like just come up with a topic and talk about it with the class and that really helped me to overcome my shyness. Um, there was even this one time there was this competition where we were given some certain topics and we would have to talk about it and actually came first. My dad is an electrician so I just wanted to follow, his, follow in his footsteps and I knew that he could help me with the subject. So I chose electrical installation. How has that been? Well, I could say that I've, I've really liked doing electrical installation. My dad has been a great mentor for me and also my teacher. There, there are some challenges in it at first. Like, it was hard for me to understand the different circuits, but with the help of my teacher, I was able to. When you come across your friends from St. Mary's, 
in your care uniform. Do they say anything weird to you? Actually, yes, they do. At first, they was usually giving me the joke saying, whenever they saw me, they would say, take care, as in referring to the school. But after a while, I kind of got used to it. And because I never really used to take them on, after a while, they just stopped. Had you not been here, where do you think you would have been? Probably on the block, smoking weed and maybe selling weed also. He last sat on a school bench in Form 4. He was nudged by school officials to enroll in vocational studies. She told me that I never pay attention. She gave me the paper. I never showed it to my father. I never done anything. I just told my friends she want me to, to go okay. And apart from that, I never told anybody else that. The Care Carpentry program carves students into skilled woodwork technicians. The center at Orza preaches safety first, the theoretical aspects of the job, and use of tools. Students then graduate into the ancillary station where their skills transform wood into beautiful home furnishings. You don't jack up the vehicle and go below it. That can be very, very dangerous. 18-year-old Tariq Danzi is a product of the Grosley Secondary School. Tariq, exam time, secondary school. What would happen to you during exam time? Uh, I'll get nervous. Um, I'll get sick. Um, frightened. I wouldn't really feel. In, I, I don't really get in the mood for exam. Sometimes I'd feel miserably, or sometimes I'd just pass unexpectedly. When you decided to make that move to care, what did your friend say? Well, my friend said, "Oh, um, care, care, um, care is for deck decks. Um, leave that alone. Um, you should go to work. Um, just, just forget about school for, for a good bit." But I didn't let that bother me. I had my ambition to, to be an, an auto mechanic technician. And right now, I'm still at the urge of being an, an auto mechanic technician with the support of my family and friends. All right. Best thing about being here? The best thing about being here is that I get a lot of attention from all the teachers. Whereas, compared to Grossley Secondary, I didn't get much attention. So it so happened that I secured my job before graduation. And after graduation, I'm going back to Northwest to continue my training, and I'll be, and I'll be um, employed there. They have some training. They just wasn't made to When we return, have a different strokes brain in there, but for they can different do folks. Their hands, and they have a skill and stuff like that. Everyone has different talents and different interests. We celebrate personal uniqueness in so many places, and yet our schools still follow a factory model that forces both teachers and students into routines that engage and reward certain learners while marginalizing others. Educators, by and large, do not receive training in how students learn and vary in the learning. Deeply knowing individual students as learners is not something that schools or the school system that holds them accountable prioritize or reward. As a result, many fall through the cracks. George House was a nice school. The teachers would help you. But since they have a lot of children in the class, they have to give the, uh, their attention to other children. And sometimes if you don't understand, yes, they'll try to help you, but other children need help too. So sometimes you might be left behind or you just have to run with the however you understand it. Like you know where people said, um, they have some training, they just wasn't made to have um, <laughs> brains in it, but they can do things with their hands and they have a skill and stuff like that. So when I hear that, 
when I heard that, I guess it kind of made me feel that was made for me because I'm not really intellectual, but I can do things and stuff. Even though I still be late a lot of times, <laughs> it's better than what I was doing before, like George Charles and Ave Maria. I'm much better now. And I have more confidence in myself. I like, it gives me a, a taste to do my schoolwork because in Joshua, I was, I was feeling lazy and sleepy, not wanting to do anything. But care that teachers make you feel to do things. Like sometimes they'll just put faith in you, don't even know you had. Like, um, let's say, um, <laughs> let's say you don't know something and you, they will tell you, just try. And when you try, it looks like you are you like you already know the answers to what they're going to what they expect to hear and stuff and that's wonderful. Before I came to care, right? People was addressing care like a school for girls. And since I didn't know any better, I used to believe them. So I used to in a way look down and care like I don't want to go. And then stuff like that. But then when I came to care, it's not a place for goggles or anything. That's a way different thing to what people are talking about. And when I have my care uniform in town, sometimes the train I used to go to Josh house with me, they would say, child, that's the school they bring you in. That's where you go. Why are you, didn't, why are you going to stay in Josh house? And I'll tell them, um, look here, Josh house wasn't doing anything for me. I know where I will go to. I will know where I will end up when I in care, but you don't know where you'll end up in Josh house because if you fill your CXC, that, that's it for you. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Juvenile delinquency. Jumping crime rate. Just a few problems which can be addressed with holistic development in young adults. A hook, a line, and a sinker, when mated with the training to use them profitably, is the greatest gift policymakers can give to the populist. Pretty flowery words. With little financial support, will only serve as the fertilizer for a decaying society. Sometimes, the eggs for future development are right in our eyes, waiting to be hatched. Collectively, we all just need to care. Society tends to look at more academics than the vocational skills that children have. So it is better if you, if at a very early age as a parent you realize that your child is not an academic person, don't, don't kill yourself over that. Just try to encourage your child to understand, okay, I know that you're not a book person, because some parents go as far as they want to physically punish the child when they realize the child is not a book person. But at the end of the day, if everybody has to be a lawyer and everybody has to be a priest or everybody has to be a nurse, what is happening? What will be happening on the street? Who's going to clean the gutter? Who's going to bake the bread? And who's going to catch the fish? Sometimes I look at the white collar job as giving a man a fish. But with, when you are, you are skillful, it's like you are learning how to fish, you are learning how to take care, you're learning how to maintain yourself. The only reason I have been working with this institution for 20 years is because of the remarkable changes when I see the young persons blossom. And this is my satisfaction with UNIF Care. And I know that any young person who comes through the program and who are willing to learn and want to make changes in their lives, they can and they will be successful. To the men on the block, I would say, wake up, smell the coffee, weed, gambling, it doesn't bring you anywhere. You should really come to care. You'll be able to learn a skill that will last you throughout your life. They prepare you for your lifetime. They prepare you for work. They prepare you for everything. And that's what we need because you in secondary school, yes, they're preparing you for CXC and stuff, but the teachers don't really prepare you for the working world. And you have to be pre prepared for the working world. We are going to make sure we do our best, our utmost best. We may not win all, but we definitely will not stop without a fight to try and help these young people become better men of society. That's my promise to you, and I don't make promises that I don't keep. I'm not a politician. Could go on and on, the fool has never been told. Could go on and on, the fool has never been told. Could go on and on, the fool has never been told. Could go on and on, the fool has never been told. Could go on and on, the fool has never been told. Could go on and on, the fool has never been told. Could go on and on, the fool has.
Last Never Peace